All right, after a long week away, we're back with the dolls. Uh, I was in the Eastern Caribbean because some I this is embarrassing. I was in the Caribbean and I basically don't know where I was. Like I could tell you the names of the places, but I could not tell you their relative geographic positions. I was in the British Virgin Islands. I was in the U.S. Virgin Islands, and I was in the Bahamas. Is that the is that the Eastern Caribbean or the Western Caribbean? Western. Okay, Eastern. Never mind. <laughs> oh man. That is the American zone. It's kind of crazy. I really, like, I can't say this without it coming across as offensive. But, um, like, it's, maybe it's okay that it's offensive, uh, in a way at least. I lived in Korea for a year, and the kinds of, like, uh, people that come from North America to teach English in South Korea, you meet some normal, nice people, and then you meet some insane people who are escaping from mistakes that they made in their life. Um, and they're like, this is my only way out. You know, you, you meet like someone who just finished college and they're like, I can pay off part of my student loans, get some work experience and also travel. And then you meet some dudes that are like, I'm 42 and I just got divorced and I needed to do something. And I'm like, brother, this is not this is not supposed to be your domain. You could go for it. Don't get me wrong. But like, that's scary. When there's a 22 year old who just graduated from college, who's like, I'm going to teach English in Korea. You're like, OK, give it a try. When you're like, I'm. 53 and this is my third year you're like what it's i'm not saying you're doing anything crazy i'm just saying it's it's a different vibe and then the kinds of dudes that i was seeing who obviously had restarted their lives on the american virgin islands was like that cranked up to infinity like there were dudes who were just like i don't know how to explain it they were just pirates I don't know if maybe they were like involved in some kind of tourist operation, but they were just walking down the street dressed as pirates. And I know what you're going to say. Those are actors. But it was like they were method acting if that is <laughs> like they did not look like they came from uh, Fayetteville and then they'd been in the U.S. Virgin Islands for two days. It's like they had lived there for like years and they were having like rum punch at 807 a.m. and it was not day one anyway but it was fun i had a great time <clears throat> back to work johto okay is a classic uh a classic question johto is region two is that correct region two generation two Flying Poison, Crobat, easy, Poison, Final Evolution, fucking Arbok, bro, Normal Poison, Skorupi, let's go with a safer bet, Normal Johto, mmm, Bidoof, <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> But Doof, not Generation 2. I, I would, he had Generation 2 written all over him, bro. Normal Evolved by Friendship seems very tough. Flying Johto. Ho-Oh from the last episode of the anime. Ho-Oh did not look this fucking angry in the show. Am I crazy? I thought he was like a majestic bird. That was like, it made you think about the possibilities of the future. And then like his character portrait is like, he's pissed off, man. <laughs> they made him vindictive. They gave him a fucking swoop and a smoky eye, bro. I thought he was like, uh, I thought he was like Mew. Like he was birthed from the, uh, like a pure angel or something like that. Apparently not though. I don't know. Maybe it's just a look. Maybe it's just a look. Flying evolved by friendship. I have no idea. Johto. Final evolution. We do this every time. You got Torchic. You got Chikorita. Chikorita evolves in the fucking... Chikorita. Chikorita evolves in the fucking... She's got the flowers around her. 
plume. Hmm. A canopy. Hmm. <laughs> um, a fucking Vin... No, I'm thinking of Venus. Yo! Venusaur G-Max, bro. Got the Jonathan Taylor Thomas look. And my body hair growth pattern. But, you know, they're kind of owning it. Oh, dude, they made a, they made a G-Max Eevee? Look at this, man. He just gets cuter. It's the only Pokemon that just gets cuter as it evolves. Hatterene is a, is a fucking, is a hat. I don't know what else to say about Hatterene G-Max. Um, Torchic and Chikorita and Piplup. Piplup and Totodile, who then evolves into Crocoma. Into Croco. <laughs> that doesn't look like a final evolution. That looks like a second evolution. Rock rough own tempo. <laughs> like and rock midday, man. Like and rock midnight. Holy, oh, get some sleep, brother. This is crazy. <laughs> Croco, Croco guy. Varum. The only Pokemon you can smoke. Croco, it's not, I'm not, I, final evolution evolved by friendship. All I could think, oh, you know, I know it's Alakazam. Because, oh no, that's trading. That's not friendship. You could trade with your enemies. Just look at the global economy. Um, I have to imagine that like Clif, Clifable might evolve. No, they evolve via the Moonstone. You point Dexter. Flying evolved by friendship. Who's the friendliest flying Pokemon? That's got to be fucking Togekiss, bro. Look at this guy. All right. Normal Johto. Fucking Pat Rat. Pat Rat? He looks pretty normal. Was he not Gen 2? They weren't at the bottom of the barrel by Gen 2. Johto, final evolution. Who's the fire lad from, from Gen 2? Torchic. <laughs> I don't know. He, he evolves into Blaziken. He evolves into Cinder Ace. He evolves into Indeedy Male. Minior Meteor. What the fuck is Runericus? <laughs> is this real, man? <laughs> What is this? This looks like some shit you draw at a museum and then you scan it in and it like shows up on the screen. What is it, man? It's the stroke is thicker than my Photoshop thumbnails. I think it's clear that I'm cooked here. I haven't seen almost any of these motherfuckers ever. Um... This is not good. <laughs> Normal poison. Weedle. Really? <laughs> I thought that was I thought that was good, man. Flying and evolved by normal evolved by friendship. Is there any Pokemon that are holding a heart or something like that? What about what about um Smoochum? Smoochum evolves into Jinx via friendship. This was a fucking tough one, man. This was tough for me. Let's see most common. Oh, Centred! The, the mom said it's my turn to use the Xbox Pokemon in Pokemon Go. And you're going to be like, what does that mean? When you see him <clears throat> in Pokemon Go, he stands like this. Like, like a kid in your door frame at 1 a.m. I threw up. And then you also see 300 of him every day if you play the game. Blissey, I, I probably could have gotten. Togetic? Oh my god, I said Toge Kiss evolves by friendship, but that's fucking a little bit semantic, okay? Okay, obviously Togetic does evolve via friendship. Maybe it's not semantic, maybe I'm just wrong. 
Uh, well, that was a fun one, at least. It's supposed to be semantic. Poke Doku, you will never be the New York Times. It's a movie that takes place in New York City, which narrows it down to 80% of movies ever released. The other 20% are set in Los Angeles. That's Madison Square Garden. What's the most New York movie ever made that could be lit like this? This honestly, to me, I'm going a little crazy. This either looks like, I'm, I swear to you I'm being genuine when I say this. This looks like Michael Bay or David Fincher. I feel like it's one of the two. To me, this looks, I'm going to say this is Uncut Gems though. Because I see Madison Square Garden. It does it open with the, no, it opens with the, they're pulling the opal out of the mine and then it goes, Back to Adam Sandler, the dinosaurs were, were coming to this thing. Daddy, Mommy, Me. Marriage Story takes place in Los Angeles. <laughs> um, this is Insidious. They don't have that one, huh? Put a shirt on, Daddy. Daddy's, wait, Daddy's got boxing gloves on. Daddy's got boxing gloves on, bro! Uh, it's not Creed. Um... It has Curtis 50 Cent Jackson in it. Hi, Tomo. <laughs> Creed 2. Um, next. It's got Forrest Whitaker in it. It's the Jake Gyllenhaal movie that I thought hadn't come out, but it has come out. It, Jake Gyllenhaal is in UFC. The movie is called Undisputed. It's called Forgivelessness. It's called The Fighter 2. The, the Brawler. I'm not going to know it. I'm not going to know it. Southpaw. <laughs> I know I've seen... I saw Jake Gyllenhaal getting cut up. You know, like it was like, oh, look at how how shredded he is. And I was like that. I probably saw the first picture of that in 2017. And then imagine my surprise like a week ago when I was like, apparently this shit is just coming out now. This is an old movie. This is old. I'm, I'm out of the fucking loop, bro. This movie's from 2015. Well, it shows what I know. They got me today. They got me. Two different movies. Fair enough. One's boxing, one's UFC. It really is Curtis... Curtis 50 Cent Jackson in it. 60% on Rotten Tomatoes. But I like that. I like that they, they pull some, you know, mid-cuts for frames sometimes. I would have thought that it... Uh, like the first few times I played Framed, I was like, I get it, you know, you love John Cazale movies, but it's just not like stuff that I understand. I haven't, I'm not that familiar with them. But now that they start pulling like, you know, mid-tier, mid-2010s boppers, I'm like, I respect it. AFC team in 2020. After 15 seasons as a Charger, Phillip Rivers played the final season of his NFL career with this AFC team in 2020. I have no idea. It's the <clears throat> a team that didn't have a, a, a quarterback a few years ago. Before Joe Burrow got drafted, the Bengals were dookie tier. Nope, not true. All right. Following his tenure with the Knicks, Jeff Van Gundy acted as the head coach of this Western Conference team from 2003 to 2007. That's easy, it's the Utah Jazz. All right. NHL! NHL! This Tampa Bay Lightning Center led the NHL in goals in 2010. Yeah, okay, Steven Stamkos, bro. That's a gimme. After Berlin, what is the most populated city in Ger... Um, I'm gonna guess that that's Germany. My, I mean, I would think that there's Munich and Frankfurt and Hamburg and then probably like some city I'm forgetting that's actually the right answer. 
I'm going to guess that it's Frankfurt because otherwise, why would they build the big airport there? Wrong. <laughs> it's, what is it? It is Munich. Is that why Steven Spielberg made the movie? Don't answer that. It's Hamburg? It's Christopher Nolan and Emma Stone. Did I not? I didn't, I didn't pick Christopher Nolan. My mistake. A terrible image. Well, originally packaged in blue bottles, this flavored brand of water introduced in 2002 is a product of Gatorade and is marketed by PepsiCo. Propel. Holy cow, he's cracked, bro. <laughs> Ooh. How'd you get it? I was alive then. After Two and a Half Men, Charlie Sheen's next TV role was starring in this FX sitcom loosely based on a film from 2000. Oh, it's, it's got to be anger management, bro. That's the only thing that makes sense. Now, that is crazy because I haven't seen anger management, the show. I saw anger management, the movie two times. Didn't like it either time. It's kind of an embarrassing mark on Jack Nicholson's career, but he can do what he wants. Following four lifelong stoner friends, Dave Chappelle starred in this cult favorite stoner comedy, Half Baked. What do you mean lifelong stoner friends? Aren't they like 22 in the fucking... <laughs> in the movie? Anger management does have a goaded gift, though. You're right. Jack Nicholson going... I know what you're talking about. This female singer had her first top five hit in 2018 with her song, Bad at Love. I'm bad at love. And it's going to my home. And it's going to my home. And then her first number one hit in 2019 with Without Me. I don't know who this is. I'm going to assume that it's Bebe Rexa, the most famous artist I can think of from that time period who I know nothing about. It is not Bebe Rexa. <laughs> who is it? That's Halsey! Oh, Halsey! Does, is Halsey the, the uh, woman part from... Now I'm sitting pretty in a hotel lobby. That one? Yes, she is. What's your favorite Jagged Little Pill song, NL? Listen, now you're going to get me talking, okay? It's kind of hard to separate the popularity of the songs on the album from how they play in 2024. It's not ironic. I think ironic is overplayed, but also a little overhated. But it, you ought to know, like, I, I just, I romanticize going back in a time machine to like 1993 or 1994 and hearing that shit on the radio and being like, damn, she's fucking breaking the house down. She's talking about sucking dick in the movie theater. She wants to like kill her ex-boyfriend and the bass is going crazy and the chorus, she's screaming. And then her voice, the Alanis voice when she gets really emotional and she goes like, hi, hi, you know what I'm saying? But there, I like a lot of them. I like, I like Head Over Feet. I like, um, what I really want, side one, track one. I like, uh, I mean, I like um, You Live, You Learn. I think that's inspirational. Uh, the album has no skips. I don't know if it has no skips, but it has some good ones. I mean, it, I, it's almost all great ones, I should say. What's the one that's like, hello, Mr. Man. You didn't learn my name. You didn't think I'd come back roly-poly and give you your t-shirt with a stain. And I'm at my home now that I'm a millionaire. That's a good one. That's a, that's a good one, too. That's right through you. I see right through you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, they got, some, they got some classics on there. I gotta check this album out. Is actually the Canadian... Many people are saying that Jagged Little Pill is the Canadian exile in Guyville. Many people are saying it. I'm not the first person to say it. 
What are we on? Wordle fucking three? Like, we got to go a little faster, bro. Wordle three. Baby cradle can meow. <laughs> Good for the cradle, brother. Towel, pajamas, slippers, pajamas, slippers, robe, and washcloth. Things you wear after a bath. That's fucked up, bro. Just think about it for a second. This could be rearranged to loips. <laughs> We're going too far. Too far. Towel, washcloth. Booty. Booty. Booty, bum, rear, can. Synonyms for your anus. She took a shit in the mother cradle and no washcloth can clean the spoil. Things Rebecca Ferguson did when she called out a male actor she will no longer work with because he yelled at her. Am I still up with the modern discourse? Am I still, am I still current? You pretty much got it? Okay. <laughs> what happened to Kate Middleton, man? They're posting fucking Dolly 2 images of Kate Middleton? The hands are all fucked up. The skirts don't match. What is she okay? What's going on, man? Also, who is Kate Middleton? Spoil. Pilos. Slopey. Bore. Bore. Loti. <laughs> I still, I'm, brother, I'm, this is shit you wear after the damn bath, okay? Eye, the eye of a hurricane, the baby of a hurricane, mother, baby, cradle, things that hold a baby, babies, baby, pamper, pamper, re, p map, re, p map. Hey, Rex Mechanica, thanks for the gifted subscriptions, by the way. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Things, things you use to dry off. Meow. Four letter words. Words with oi sound. Words with two vowels consecutively. Words with an E and an O in them. Words where the only vowels are an E and an O and you, yo, would you, would you fucking, would you fucking do, yo, okay, no, I'm, I am mentally ill, I'm mentally ill, I'm seeing patterns that don't exist. I'm the inspiration for Darren Aronofsky's hit film Pi. I'm performing a self-trepanation. The New York Times has infected me with the mind virus. But I'm not wrong, right? EO, EO. Pamper. Things that happen to you at a spa. You get pampered, you get a robe, you get a slippers. You get some fucking pajamas? Things you get in first class on the airplane? <laughs> bath robe, bath towel, bath slippers. Bath, bath. Bath, 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 bath. Did I ever tell you I think washcloths are a scam, by the way? Towels, necessary, important. You need to dry off somehow. You're not just going to air dry. It'll take you like an hour. Washcloths, what do they do, bro? What do they do except take up space in the laundry? How else do you wash your, wash your sensitive regions? Fucking get in there with my, with my fingers, bro, the way God intended. It removes dead skin. I'm not sweating all that. <laughs> they scrub and exfoliate. Isn't that like a, a bad for you? <laughs> Do 
you literally are. <laughs> well, you know, I guess. I don't know. You think cavemen had fucking exfoliation, bro? No shot. How do you clean your back? Momentum and water. Hello, honey. Whoa, you painted your fingernails. No. Oh, is it a Band-Aid? No. It's tape. No. What is it? It's a a nail decoration! Mommy did decoration. It looks so nice, honey. It looks so cool. I want it too. Maybe after work you can do it to daddy, okay? Mommy. You okay? I want to Okay, bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye. Thanks for visiting. She's got the four syllable words down. Yeah, she can read. It's uh, kind of amazing, to be honest. Like, she can't read everything, but she can, you know, the clip where she could read was from like a month ago. She's fucking literate now. <laughs> She's popping off. Because the thing is, is like once you learn how to read, like you can, you know, read even more, right? <laughs> you know, <laughs> so obviously she didn't get the intelligence from me. But it's like when you can't read, you're basically just looking at nothing. But as soon as you can read a few words, you can start like piecing the, everything together. It's like programming. It's like it's when, once you learn the syntax and you're like, oh, I can actually like make applications now and while you make the applications that firms up your knowledge of the syntax and then you get exposed to higher order problems and then you solve those problems and those become foundational and you just keep you just keep going and then eventually i don't know sometime around 2014 everybody fucking lost it and every application just keeps getting worse and worse and worse for some reason why the fuck do we have paper towel dispensers that can run out of batteries bro what the fuck are we doing as a society that the paper towel dispensers can run out of batteries? We had it! The automatic sink, if it works, I understand. Maybe you don't want to touch the tap. But the, we had the pumps on the soap dispensers and the, you smash the fucking hammer on the paper towel dispensers and the paper towel comes out. Now listen, I'm not going to let you gaslight me either. It's, oh, it's environmental, it's environmental. You wave your hand in front of the fucking thing, one centimeter strip of towel comes out. Your ass is not drying. You didn't wash your hands adequately if that's enough to dry your hands, okay? You gotta do it like five fucking times. And then you get like one normal regulation size strip of paper towel. Shit is so annoying. And so now I feel like they, they're like, they've got some nanny tech in there that if you, if you wave your hand too fast, they're like, sorry, you don't deserve this paper towel. Who do you think, what, what society do you think made you, motherfucker? You are subservient to us. I need the paper towel. You don't tell me how many paper towels I need. Oh, you're at your, a lot, you're at your quota of paper towels today. Fuck you, bro. Give me the paper. We, the people, made you. And you try to deprive us of the fruits of our labor? And I meant that fucking tweet that I tweeted. That was like motion sensing sink, manual soap dispenser, fucking Dyson hands-free air dryer. What are we doing here? How are we shaming people? Are we shaming people for not washing their hands for 20 seconds? Or are we shaming people for, oh, you're killing the environment because you need two paper towels to dry your fucking hands. Make up your mind how we're going to be sanctimonious today, okay? Phase one, thanks for the gifted subscriptions, by the way. Thank you. You know that, I don't know if it's a tweet or a Tumblr post or something, that was like every 50-year-old programmer has one piece of technology in their house, it's a printer, and they keep a gun next to it, just in case it goes off. That's how I'm starting to feel about society. <laughs> I'm, I know, this is the great contradiction of my life, is that I, I rely on this technology to work. So that's not lost on me. I am participating in society while criticizing it. 
But at the same time, you got to stop making tech, boys. You got to stop. What we've got right now is most of it is pretty bad. Spend the rest of your life making it better and then don't make any more. Okay? You did, you did what you could. I need money though. I understand that, but like <laughs> somebody has to stop you, man. Sorry, we're playing connections. <clears throat> tech enthusiasts. My entire house is smart. Tech workers. The only piece of technology in my house is a printer, and I keep a gun next to it so I can shoot it if it makes a noise I don't recognize. Exactly. That's thank you, librarian. Thank you. <clears throat> Hello, honey. Mommy has no flashlight. Oh my God, what are you doing with that flashlight? Oh, you found me. For hidden potions. Oh, for hidden potions. No, for hidden. Oh, hidden persons like myself. Yeah. Okay, honey. What? I think you should go up and see mommy. Daddy's Daddy's doing a puzzle right now. Okay, come. I can't come. I gotta get some work done. Hi. Can you say hi to Chad? Hi. But can you make a surprise? Can I make a surprise for you? I'll see what I can do, okay? For now, go have some fun with mommy, okay? Well, I know, you got lots of surprises though, right? Need more. You need more. <laughs> and that's why we can't stop making the tech, man. That's why we can't stop making this. By the way, I don't know if you can see the light reflected on my face right now. I w there's a, a culture on the Disney cruise, okay? Of... Um, it's called pixie dusting. You give other rooms on the cruise ship uh, little trinkets and gifts and stuff, especially if they have kids. Because the kid, you, what's your favorite part of going on a Disney cruise? Surprise. The surprises, right? I wish all families that are putting 35 million lumen flashlights and LEDs into these things a very stop right now, please. Any parent will tell you, I, the kids love it. But what are the parents doing putting like a, a laser pointer that could take down a 737-8 Max in the mailbox? Like some, they, they put in like, oh my God, you scared me. <laughs> they put in like candy and stuff and I'm like, that's great. I'll have half, she'll have half. She's three and a half. I'm keeping her safe, right? But then they put in like a, literally like a police flashlight and I'm like, why would you put that why would you give that to a child in a, in a confined space? Like we were on the cruise. Here, come here, come here. And uh, she said, Daddy, close your eyes. And I said, okay. I closed my eyes. And she said, okay, open them. And she had two incredibly strong LEDs that came into our like ship mailbox. And she was holding them like a centimeter away from her eyes. And I was like, you gotta stop that. Why, why were they giving us these LEDs in the first place? Yeah. The other, the, the food is good though. Yeah. yeah. Oh, hey, why would you put my chapstick under the desk? Now I can't get it. Here, go, go up and see mommy. She's calling you. Bring your flashlight. Okay, now I'm, I'm okay, okay, go ahead. Anyway, problem. When does daycare restart? Well, like today, but we got in really late last night. Today's all messed up. Okay, connections. Towel, robe, <laughs> bath slippers, bath washcloth, things you use in a bath, things in a spa locker room. Hey, Mr. Pony, thanks for the gifted subscriptions. Thank you. Thank you. Things you can uh, do to a child. You can spoil it. You can cradle it. You can mother it and you can pamper it. Okay, we got there. What? You can baby it, not, not mother it, I guess. 
Treat with excessive care. Cat, okay, cats, blank, I'll give you that one. I made the same mistake. Listen, I'm, I'm very pro-connections, but I do want to say, I guess, well, whatever, they kind of got me. <laughs> Look, I'm going to keep the dolls going. I'm sorry, I got to go pee, though. My bladder's on Eastern Standard Time. I'll be right back. I apologize. Can I also say, uh, as men, we need to have an intervention, okay? What is it about being on an airplane that has 15%, just eyeballing it, 15% of men going like this the whole flight? The whole, the whole time? Like once over the course of the, the flight, if you have no other option, like I get it, but literally like every two minutes for the entire flight, like what's, what's wrong with you, bro? I don't mean it in like a judgmental way. I mean like in a medical way, what's, what's wrong? Can't you just go to the bathroom? That's what I'm saying, man. Just go to the bathroom. You, you got to fart on the airplane. You go to the bathroom. You wait in line behind five people who take way too long. And then you let it rip in that cavernous toilet. You got a hork? Do the same thing. It's no big deal. <laughs> Holds up, hork. <laughs> You just fart in the seat? We live in a society, bro. I'll return soon. <clears throat> BRB. Sour condiment. Sauerkraut. Muppet with a long hooked beak. Gonzo. Drunken as a brunch. Boozy? Letters beside Chuck Schumer's name. Dem. What? Buzzy. Used as a campaign talking point. Ran on. Oh, DNY! D dash NY! Oh, I thought that was like a fashion designer. This guy's insane. That was pretty good. I had 36 seconds with a couple mistakes in there. This shit took me six minutes today. I don't know. It's different people, they got different, different things trip them up, right? Like, I mean, I got fucked on connections today. But the New York Times mini cross... You know what the secret is on the new New York Times mini crossword? Do not... Um, ever make an account. <laughs> I don't need an account to play your mini crossword. The second you make me make an account, I will no longer be playing your mini crossword. It's up to you. Maybe you decide that you need it at some point. That's fine. I'm happy to divest myself uh, from the miniature crossword. I'm not making another account. I'm full. I don't need it. I'm not, I'm not downloading any more apps, okay? Stayed at a hotel called Gaylord Palms. They said, you want to find your way around the hotel? 
Download the Gaylord Palms app. You really think I'm going to download an app for every single hotel that I go to? You must have lost your mind. We used to navigate by the fucking stars, bro. And now I need to have an app for every store I go into to help me navigate from fucking menswear to sundries. Like, no, I'll just walk. I don't need it. I don't need an app for the MCO airport. Oh, look, fucking Auntie Annie's is open. Who gives a shit, bro? I don't need it. It's too much. It's got the price on the box. You got to be some kind of person <laughs> to, <laughs> to fucking buy 200 sticks of double mint gum at Costco. You better be 98 years old. <laughs> oh, man. Original 35 cent gum. Okay. I don't think it was 35 cents originally. I bet it was like a, a, a single penny farthing. But let's think about this. A stick of double mint gum has to cost like two cents. <laughs> and there's maybe, maybe four cents and there's 200 sticks in the John. Okay. So that's like eight bucks. I think it's going to be $6.99, bro. I, don't, I think this is price to move. <laughs> Ooh. But here's the thing, right? If this is actually what the packaging looks like in Costco, you're not paying 12 bucks for it. If you're paying 12 bucks for it, that's, that's non-Costco prices. Today's price is not yesterday's price. You got to be getting a bargain. You're probably right. They probably put 12 bucks on the box so that you're like, holy cow, a lifetime supply of double mint gum for like 45% off. Buying gum is crazy, man. Like one pack at the checkout lane of the grocery store is one thing. But buying 40 packs of gum at Costco is fucking... That's crazy. How did I get here? <laughs> I don't know. Stop scratching me. I do have to, I have to check out Strand. Everyone's telling me to check out New York Times Strands. Hello, Domo, hello. <clears throat> Bahamas. If there was ever a, I can finally see where I went. So I'm assuming that maybe something like here is the British Virgin Islands and then like this is the US Virgin Islands. <laughs> Something like that. You pretty much got it. Farther down. Farther down. Really? Like down, down here? I'm just going to say, and this would be the, the end of me, but um, if you get off a cruise ship, the border guard should say, um, can you point to where you are on a map right now? It, it, like... Step one, do you know the name of the country you're about to visit and buy four t-shirts from? Four of the worst t-shirts that you've ever seen in your entire life? I'd be like, yeah, British Virgin Islands. They said, point to it on the map. Don't let me in. I don't know where, I didn't know where it was. And I'm, and I'm embarrassed that I don't. I'm not saying like, oh, it's a good thing. You should be happy I'm bringing my Canadian dollars to the British Virgin. No. They should say you have not shown an ample amount of respect to do even the slightest bit of preparation. They should, they should have barred me from entry and told me to get back on the boat. Six hundred kilometers. It's the Dominican Republic. It's Haiti! By the way, can I tell you? I had two very interesting Uber experiences. Um while we were in the United States of America. The first was when the Uber driver recognized me at the end of the ride and said, hey, 
random question, are you a streamer? And I said, I am. And then he said, are you the streamer who did that clip about the picky eaters? And I said, yes, that's probably me. And then he was like, I was looking at you in the mirror and I was like, is this the effing guy? Is this the effing guy who did that picky eaters thing? This effing guy. And I was, I was just laughing and going, ha ha ha. You know, he was, he was listening to Fahrenheit 451 audiobook. He seemed like a cool guy. He said, if you have any questions about Orlando, let us know or let me know. But then I also had an Uber drive where I was 100% sure that Kate and I were going to be killed, full stop. What happened? On the day we were leaving Orlando to get on the boat, we got an Uber from our hotel uh, and we went into the ride. We loaded in our suitcase and stuff like that. The guy seemed very nice. Uh, we got to like the first turn. We drove like 100 meters. And then he said, whoa. Did you cancel on the app? What happened? And then like we looked at his little kiosk and we looked at our phone and like somehow the ride had become disconnected. And uh, he said, wait, so like this happens now and then? Do you want me to bring you back to the hotel? And I said, yeah, I guess we can do that. He said, or I could just drive you all the way to the cruise terminal anyway and you could just you know venmo me or whatever and i said okay um let's go back to the hotel but kate was like that sounds good <laughs> i was like you know what we're gonna get killed i was like checking my phone to make sure that like we were still moving to the east everything ended up working out just fine but there was like 45 minutes of me being like this is the end of my life Hi, honey. Whoa, such pretty nails. And, and you get to have it, too. Yeah, I'll take some when I'm finished, okay? You can take the green one. Okay. And we to come to the tea party right now. I can't do a tea party right now, honey. Can you do a tea party with Mommy and Daddy will do it after work? Sorry. Only sparkly nails. Only sparkly nails can do the tea party? Oh, so you invited me to the tea party, but I'm not even allowed to come. Okay. Thanks, <laughs> And then people are saying he was just cutting out Uber. Honestly, cool rock, honey. You can keep it. Okay, you can take that rock. I kind of respected it. If, as long as he didn't kill me, I was happy to pay him cash. And cut out Uber. I would much rather do a taxi than an Uber, except for the fact that, like, probably the last 10 taxis I took before Uber came to Vancouver drove, like, 40 kilometers an hour over the speed limit, two centimeters from the bumper of the car in front of them while talking on their cell phone incredibly loudly the whole time and, like, asking me the route that I want to go to the airport. And I'm like, I don't know, brother, you're literally a professional driver. That's what my Ubers do now? <laughs> well, we need a new Uber, man. We need, we need comfortable Uber. You should be able to hit like a button on your Uber drive that is like, don't drive fast. Or if you're in a rush, you could fucking click drive fast. But I'm like, I would, I would give you like an extra 5% tip if you just didn't have me like holding the handle in the Chrysler Pacifica the whole time. What am I doing? I'm so like out of practice. 5% tip. but the Pacifica is so nice. Bro, every time I'm in a, an Uber that's a van, I'm like, I'm reaching that age. I gotta buy a van. When I'm, when I'm in the second row of the van, I'm like, holy fuck, bro. They got pilot seats in this bitch. It's not like bench seating in the back, it's pilot seats. And then the person driving the van is always like 
They're, they're like the closest thing to like a, a pilot that you can get in a car. They got their whole command center up at the front. Like they can control all the doors from their little console. They got like overhead buttons and stuff like that. And like, it's, it seems incredible, bro. They got so much storage. Hard to park in the city, that's for sure. But this is Mexico flipped horizontally. This is on the east. This is Croatia. It's not Croatia. It's on the east coast of Africa. It's Ethiopia. It's not on the coast. That's bad. It's Cameroon, which is on the coast. <laughs> okay. It's the Central African Republic. It's Angola. It's... Uh, <laughs> God is my witness. I have absolutely no idea. I don't know what the fuck Burundi looks like. Congo! <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Wow. Honestly, same as it ever was. Italy, but the dog ate the boot. Oh, we're screwed, bro. February of last year? That I had in February of last year. I got potential. Rush it and rush it around. You know what I'm saying? It's Valentine's Day 2023. It really should be easy enough. What 20th Century Fox movie was freaking popping, bro? It had been out since December, and it made $657 million. Directed by actor two, Zoe Saldana. Avatar? <laughs> it took me a second. It took me a second. Okay, there we go. Avatar. Damn, James Cameron really the goat, huh? Week 10, 9% drop-off. Week 9, 4% drop I mean, listen, you're starting to peter out a little bit there, but... Disney movie opened to $106 million last year. This, this strikes me as Wakanda Forever or um, Thor Love and Thunder. I feel like it's Wakanda Forever. I feel like it's Thor, Love and Thunder. I feel like it's in, I feel like it's Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. I feel like it's Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. <laughs> we get these, we get these. Warner Brothers. Week two, starring Channing Tatum. Magic Mike's Last Dance. I mean, that's a given. It's not some obscure art house film like Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. <laughs> Universal. Week nine, great long tale on Antonio Banderas. This is the uh, most realistic depiction of a panic attack ever put to screen. Puss in Boots, The Last Wish. And $30 million universal film starring Dave Batista. This is a knock at the cabin. He's done it. 67%? Dude, that's pretty good. If only my ass knew Ant-Man 3 and Avatar, we would have been fucking cruising today, bro. This 97-year-old cat still makes panic attacks the most realistic old-fashioned way. 
Are you being sarcastic about Puss in Boots? Listen, I'm not trying to get the animation is real cinema horde knocking at my door. I'm merely making a reference to uh, when Puss in Boots went viral for its depiction of a panic attack, at which point people replied and said, you need to watch real movies, at which point people replied and said animated movies are real movies, and it's just, uh, you know... Take a look at the lawman beating up the wrong guy. Oh man, wonder if he'll ever know. They're in the best-selling show. You know what I'm saying? Just another trip around the damn sun. It's crazy that it's only a year ago. You should do Broadway? What are you talking about? Commercial Broadway, where the baklava man is hawking his wares? Channing, Jesse Eisenberg heist Woody Harrelson. Now you see me. Wesley Snipes basketball, Woody Harrelson. White men can't jump. Samuel L. Jackson, basketball. Coach Carter. Coach. Carter. <laughs> I'm, I'm confused, man. It's the shapes are not shaping, man. Uh, magicians. You've been served. A dance movie, of course. Rosie Perez, you've been This is Pineapple Express, stoners. Rosie Perez must be in White Men Can't Jump. Channing Tatum is in Coach Carter. I did not know that. And Blade! It's Blade! We get these. Swaps left seven. That was a pretty good one. Your mother. Some motherfuckers are always trying to ice skate uphill. Have you ever seen Blade in the modern era? The car chase in Blade is one of the funniest shots, I think. And I love it because it actually has style. Like, they, they swung for the fences on the car chase in Blade when he is following the, the supplicant. <laughs> I wish when movies weren't afraid to be a little silly, man. It's a little goofy. Um, movies about King Arthur. Green Knight, Monty Python, and the Holy Grail. Sword in the Stone. I'm assuming Excalibur. Anaconda, Deliverance. Movies with John Voight. A Ghost Story. A24 elevated uh, supernatural horror film starring Casey Affleck. The Jungle Book, Pete's Dragon, movies directed by John Favreau. Okay, he did not direct, um, he might not have directed any of this shit. Old Man and the Gun, Clint Eastwood, Snake Eyes, Nicolas Cage, The General, I'm going to assume that's John Voight, The Aristocats, animated Disney films. No. Hmm. Movies with a, with a treacherous snake. Snake Eyes, <laughs> The Jungle Book, Anaconda. No! Deliverance goes here. Where the fuck is John Voight, bro? <laughs> Where's Deliverance, Anaconda. How many swaps? I have nine swaps. It's so gettable. It's possible John Voight is in The Old Man and the Gun. It's possible that he is in Point Blank. Yeah, he's... What is this? Not John Voight! <clears throat> if 
Five swaps left, huh? I don't know what these are. I know what deliverance is, but the rest of them, I'm like. Oh, you're right. Green is the connector. Green is the connector. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. It's, uh, with five swaps, it's all coming together. Um, Disney's animated classics. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, what do we got? Two swaps? Hi, you okay? Oh, you took your nails off? I took, a, I took my ugly nails off and I closed with a positive and black cat. Okay, that's, that's fine. Here, why don't you bring your chair over here? I thought, I thought mommy took it and I bring it to you. Here, here, here. I thought you wished to... That was my mommy said, no, daddy just white. It's Dev Patel. It's Jared Harris. You know anything else about the Green Knight? No. I think it's a tale about Sir Galahad's um, quest to make a name for himself in the court of Camelot and uh, the absurd levels that he's willing to go to make that happen. Perhaps even the self-destructive uh, tendencies he's willing to embrace in order to get just a taste from the goblet of fame. I got it from Kabbalah. What? I said it. <laughs> it's not Galahad, it's Sir Gawain. Okay. Isn't that like a menswear store? No. <laughs> I don't think Jared Harris is in the Green Knight. Bro, he plays the Green Knight, right? I've never seen it. Um, the Green, the Green Knight. The Green Knight. That's Dev Patel? No, Dev Patel is, is Sir Gowan, bro. Jared Harris is the tree man. Oh, no, that's Ralph Innocent. You're right. I don't know what I'm talking about then. I got two swaps left, right? This is, it's, un, it's mathematically doable, but I don't know. This has got to be John Voight, bro. John Voight is not in the Holy Grail, so he must be in this John right here. No, no. Chad, is it possible? <laughs> I'm so washed. What happened, man? Okay, let's see. Excalibur point blank, the general deliverance. It's got to be John Voight. D Director John Borman? The Green Knight, Pete's Dragon, the Old Man and the Gun, Ghost Story. Director David Lowry. Brother, that is... I respect them for going... This is a tough puzzle, man. These were all composed by the Sherman brothers. There's a great big beautiful tomorrow. <laughs> Waiting at the start of every day. There's a great big beautiful tomorrow. Yeah. And tomorrow is just a day away. And then uh, all these titles have snake in them. Uh, a snakes, I see. I understand it now. It's not tough if you understand the game. Okay, number one, John Borman fan in the chat. I wasn't trying to insult you. Like, uh, Deliverance, you know, it has a legacy beyond just ding -a -ding, ding -a -ding, ding -a -ding, ding -a -ding. What did it do? Tea Party! I don't know John Borman, but I understand the game, so I got it. Fucking dismissive ass. You could just say it was tough. And then I ask if you got it. You got to like embarrassingly go, yeah. Instead, you got to be like, just so you know, I'm smarter than you. Fucking, okay, Neil deGrasse Tyson. 
Go back to being interviewed by Vulture about how like science fiction isn't a documentary. Pedantic ass. <laughs> ah, it's too much power. I apologize. It's too hard, but that is <laughs> in the plus twos after someone insults your intelligence feels fucking <laughs> feels sick, bro. You recognize I haven't been able to yell at someone for like 10 days, right? Hancock to Full Metal Jacket. Jason Bateman. Will Smith, Charlize Theron, Vincent D'Onofrio. It's easy. You go Will Smith, Men in Black 1, Vincent D'Onofrio, Full Metal Jacket. That's, that's your, your hot swap. So let's just say we got that. That's a gimme. Let's go. Let's, let's mix it up a little bit. Let's, let's try to take a slightly different tact here, okay? Let's go. I know where I want to go. Okay? It's... <laughs> Eddie Marzan. The World's End. Simon Pegg. Some British movie that has Steve Coogan in it. Tropic Thunder, Jack Black, Saving Silverman, R. Lee Ermey. Let's make the prophecy come true. Eddie Marzan, The World's End. Simon Pegg, a British movie that also features Steve Coogan. <laughs> before, before he blew up, maybe just post Shaun of the Dead maybe would be where I would look for this personally. And then we got to find something that looks extremely British. Like Darren Brown, Behind the Mischief, or Scrat's Continental Crack Up. Star Trek. Run, Fat Boy, Run. Take you to Hank Azaria. Hank Azaria's in every movie that's ever been made. Here's what I'm thinking. We're going to go Run, Fat Boy, Run. Hank Azaria. Gross Point Blank. <clears throat> Jeremy Piven. Serendipity, Kate Beckinsale, Sahara, um, Rain Wilson, no, Steve Zahn, Saving Silverman, Run Fat Boy Run, Hank Azaria, Gross Point Blank, Mini Driver, no, Jeremy Piven, Jeremy Piven, bro, Serendipity, Kate Beckinsale, Sahara, she's not in fucking, she's not in Sahara, bro. Why did I think that Kate Beckinsale was in Sahara? Who, who's the, the female lead in Sahara? Penelope Cruz. Penelope Cruz, now make fucking Kate Beckinsale, all she's done is the Underworld films, man. Or, uh, no, I gotta, uh, there's no choice. You have to go Van Helsing. And then maybe like uh, Michael Sheen played the bad guy. Oh, Richard Roxburg. What the hell is this, man? They filmed this shit in Bucharest. Oh, brother. Okay, okay. So we, we simply find another, another tact, okay? So we're gonna go Hugh Jackman. Hmm. The Greatest Showman, Zach Efron, Neighbors 2, Sorority Rising, Chloe Grace Moretz, Kick Ass 1, no, Kick Ass 2. Aaron Taylor Johnson. Bullet Train, Hiroyuki Sonata, The Last Samurai, Tom Cruise, Tropic Thunder, Jack Black, Saving Silverman, Arlie Ermy is in there somewhere, okay? Now, I need you to keep me honest on this one, okay? Hugh Jackman, The Greatest Showman, Zac Efron, Neighbors 2, Sorority Rising, Chloe Grace Moretz, Kick-Ass 1, no, Kick-Ass 2. Aaron Taylor Johnson. 
Bullet Train, Hiroyuki Sonata, The Last Samurai, Tom Cruise, Tropic Thunder, Jack Black, Saving Silverman, R. Lee Ermey, sorry sir, R. Lee Ermey, Full Metal Jacket, time. <laughs> Let's go, bro! Why do you do it like this? Because it's funny. And also, I think it's a good exercise for your brain to uh, try to keep as many links in the chain going as possible. Also, we did know it was two. Yeah, we said Will Smith, Men in Black, Vincent D'Onofrio, Full Metal Jacket. He played freaking um, Gomer Pyle. Show the shortest to confirm your first guess? I don't need to. Will Smith is in Hancock. That motherfucker is definitely in Men in Black. He plays Agent fucking J, I think, or K. And then the, the aliens played by Vincent D'Onofrio, who is Gomer Pyle from Full Metal Jacket. It, it plays itself. That was a fun one. That was, dude. From Eddie Marzon to Tom Cruise. Is that the two they used? They used a much more incendiary two. Independence Day to Adam Baldwin, the full metal jacket. It is kind of crazy to think, like, I mean, obviously it was talked about a lot in the moment. But my man really slapped the host of the Oscars and then won Best Actor like an hour and a half later. That's a hell of a night. That's not a forgettable night. That's like a once in a lifetime sort of experience. <laughs> That's crazy. Best actor is the most cooked category. Who won this? It must have been uh, Killian Murphy, right? Because Oppie won everything. Yes. Robert Downey Jr. got best supporting actor for Thor uh, Love and Thunder. This is Metal Gear Solid 2. Metacritic score of 89%. <clears throat> Persona 3 Reloaded. PC, PS4, Xbox One, PS5, Xbox Series. This is like deadly premonition text, but obviously it isn't. PC, PS4, Xbox One. I don't know what it is, man. Oh, I do. It's a Yakuza game. <laughs> this is like a dragon. 2024. It's infinite wealth. It just came out. I got to be honest. I can't keep the, um, the Yakuza series straight. It's like four years ago, they made like Yakuza 5 or something like that. And then now they've they've made like a dragon yakuza 6 yakuza 0 like a dragon infinite wealth it's like there's a new yakuza game that comes out like every 8 months i'm not knocking it people seem to love them also as i understand it there's they they don't take themselves seriously which i respect don't forget about lost judgment <laughs> Whole Foods Market is now on Instacart. Tired of paying $8 for three apples? Introducing $10 for three apples. <laughs> Listen, buddy. This is the phantom pain. Don't even start with me. Tactical espionage action. Did I say real words there? <laughs> Tactical espionage action. I feel like I missed a C or something. 
Game though, thank you for this, the gifted subscriptions, Game though, thank you. All right, Game though, nuts on the table, this one's for you, okay? I see a ghost and I see like a castle. I believe this is the game known as Hogwarts Legacy. This shit is 13 Dead End Drive. It's a haunted house with spirits coming out of it. Mysterium. They don't have that one yet. You might want to add that one. That's a good one. This is uh, House of the Dead. This shit is the Rocky Horror Picture Show, actually, just to be clear. This is Super Ghouls. Ghouls? Ghosts? Super Ghosts and Goblins. This is, the, this is Kingdom Hearts! It's Kingdom Hearts! When you walk away, you won't hear me... That's not, that's not Oogie Boogie. Disney's Epic Mickey. <laughs> wow! <laughs> that's Oogie Boogie, bro. He's the Oogie Boogie Bugle Boy from Company D. Now this is epic. Game they'll guess, okay. This is where you check to see if your brain's screwed on straight. Lay. <laughs> I don't know why I'm gonna start with. You know what, let's try Animal Crossing New Horizons. Hmm, it's an isometric slash bird view. Would it be funny if we called like other games based on uh, what animal looks like it's looking at the game? Like if you were playing like uh, Subnautica and I was like, you know, it's like a dolphin's eye view game or something like that. Bird's eye view is kind of funny. Worm's eye view. A shy halud to you as well, my friend. So it came out on the Nintendo Switch, which means it couldn't be earlier than like 2016 or so. It's isometric. It was not made by Nintendo. Lots of stuff came out on the Switch. It's very popular. Balatro came out on the Switch. By the way, I felt like a genius... I downloaded Balatro the night before we left on our flight. Made sure it booted and everything. Go to the airport in the morning, see the tweet that Nintendo ripped it off of the damn app store because uh, it's getting kids addicted to gambling because it's too good. I never felt like I dodged a bullet like that. Now, I still got Slay the Spire on my phone, so even if I didn't get Balatro, I would have been okay. But still, that flight freaking flew by. Apparently, it's back on now. Which is good. It's not a baby game either. It's not a baby game. Hades. Hmm. The Underworld. Mm hmm. Wow. It's a, an indie role-playing hack-and-slash beat-em-up. With themes of drama, perhaps. From earlier than 2018. It's um, um, uh, uh, Hyper Light Drifter. Hmm. Didn't come out on the Switch, actually. And it's earlier than 2016. We're back in the damn fucking... The, take you back to the past to play the shitty games that were probably pretty good, if I had to guess. <sighs> The Binding of Isaac Rebirth. Earlier than 2014. See, now this is interesting. So it's pre-Switch, and then it came to the Switch later. Little game by the name of Hotline Miami 1. Mm, it did come out in 2012. A great era. A great era for indie games, some might say. It was isometric as well. Hmm. Perhaps a little... Game that is not by the name of Bastion because it was not made by Supergiant and it wasn't made in 2012. Isometric bird view. 
and you're walking and you're going, fuck, fuck, Action adventure RPG indie in the isometric genre. In the Ogre engine, Super Sword and Sorcery. 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 Mark of the Ninja. Not isometric bird view, but... <laughs> oh, we're cooked. I'm going to know it 100%. I'm going to know it, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to annoy me, probably. And that's fine. It really feels gettable. I mean, like, Indie 2012, I was there, man. I was there at the first can show in Cologne. Much like the author in LCD Sound Systems Magnum Opus Losing My Edge, I didn't really do anything except consume the content and be aware of its greatness at the time, but... I'm going to take the credit nonetheless. Don't starve. It's not made by clay. So why are you, play, why are you putting don't starve in there, bro? You got the platforms exactly right. All I have to do is think of a game that came out on Linux, PC, Mac, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and Nintendo Switch. Mario. You got me. You got me. It's Dr. Mario. Dr. Mario. Mario, Mario's Cookie, Mario Golf Super Rush. Ah, uh, okay, that's... Listen, it is gettable, but fair enough. Torchlight 2, it's a good action RPG. Fair enough. It was Torchlight. I know this game. I had simply forgotten it. Holy cow, it's, it's past 11 o'clock. And I wanna rock. What song is 11 o'clock? Uh, that's Saturday Night's All Right for Fighting. We got to skip ahead here a little bit, man. <laughs> this is too, I'm going too slow. <laughs> it's like, it's going to be a three hour dulls. I get visited by my child like four times. Let's go straight to Movie Grid. It's not like I have anything to do after it anyway. This is so easy. One word title. Number one guess, The Departed. You don't say The Departed. Number two guess, motherfucking Batman, 1989. We take those. Three or more word title. Five easy pieces. 4.9%, we'll take that. Released from 1980 to the year 2000. Okay. You could say as good as it gets. Really should be able to think of more. Kind of weak on the Jack Nicholson side, but we'll take that. As good as it gets is kind of goaded. Oh, really? You like the movie? Which means you uh, agree with all of the choices that Jack Nicholson makes in the movie, like throwing this dog down his trash compactor. Yes, I do. All right. Fair enough. Based. Based. Not really. One word title for Sigourney Weaver. You ever hear of Ghostbusters, bro? No, you ever hear of Heartbreakers, bro? <laughs> now we're talking. Oh, least Photoshop thumbnail of all time. Man, it's actually so funny that like Gene Hackman's last three movies are all fucking abominations. <laughs> it's got like Heartbreakers, Welcome to Mooseport, and uh, Behind Enemy Lines starring Owen Wilson. No wonder the dude's on diners, drive-ins, and dives now. It's so, I, I mean this sincerely, it's so inspirational that he's 94 years old and he just goes to the Wendy's drive-thru. 
What more could we possibly want out of our lives at that age? Like, that's crazy. Three or more word title for Sigourney Weaver. She's been a lot of stuff, man. Avatar 2, The Way of Water, I'm assuming. Cedar Rapids, Finding Dory. <laughs> it's true, it's true. It is true, Sigourney, Sigourney Weaver, Ghostbusters, Sigourney, Sigourney. What the fuck have you been in, Sigourney, except for the Alien movies and Cedar Rapids and Ghostbusters, bro? Okay, well, check this out, Ghostbusters. I got to think about this shit, man. It shouldn't be hard. I guess I got to say Avatar 2, The Way of Water. I got to be honest. I don't, I don't have a better guess. So I got I to gotta ask the audience on that one. Val Kilmer, one word title. You know that's going to be heat number one. So we say MacGruber. Oh! <laughs> 2.8. I'll take that. Oh, you're so right. Cabin in the Woods would have been would have been a classic there. She's in that. Val Kilmer, three or more word title. Kiss, kiss. And then, if you're lucky, bang, bang. Oh, fuck. <laughs> okay. 1980 to 2000. You could always, you could throw in a heat here if you have to. Otherwise, what the hell was Val Kilmer in? Top Gun, obviously. Ba Batman Forever. Riddle me this. Why is Batman... What is this, a fucking, like, um, parody movie? <laughs> this is like... <laughs> Batman Forever comes out in 1995, 1996. Riddle me this, colon. How the Joker found out if Batman truly was forever and his heart will go on? I can live with this. Top 13%. Only one most common guess. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. Should have gone with the Prince of Egypt. There's just one problem. I have never seen it. I thought I saw it when I was insanely high, but I'm pretty sure that that was actually the road to El Dorado. But I don't remember shit about either of them, <laughs> to be honest with you. <laughs> I couldn't tell you anything about them. And then, like, I got... So I get the road to El Dorado confused with... Emperor's New Groove. It's all, it's all mixed up up here. Hang on, I'm selecting all squares with bicycles. Darted, a verb meaning to throw with a sudden movement. Darted, a verb meaning to throw with a sudden... We get these. Gradual. A adjective meaning I moving, changing, gradual. or developing by f cost. A noun meaning the amount or a... <laughs> yes, I know. Godspeed. A no. noun meaning a prosperous journey. Sec Pulpit. A noun meaning an elevated platform or high reading desk. This shit is not easy, bro. Pulpit. Resilience. A noun meaning... Nuts on the table. We're going, we're going five for five for medium, guaranteed. Otherwise, you can chop one of my nuts off. Hyrax. A noun meaning any... It crashed. The game crashed. I'm sorry. <laughs> game, the game crashed. <laughs> one second, one second. I, did I hear you right? Hyrax. A noun meaning any of a family, procaviti, of small ungulate mammals of Africa and the Middle East, mm, okay, characterized by thick-set body with short legs and ears and short rudimentary legs. tail. Okay. Feet with soft pads and broad nails, and teeth of which the molars resemble those of the rhinoceros and the incisors those of rodents, called also coney, dassy. The word hyrax originates from the Greek word hy- Nuts on the table, boys. Nuts on the table. <laughs> hieroglyphics, a noun meaning hieroglyph. Hieroglyphic. 
That's what we get for hieroglyphics. I, I just got the entire genomic sequence for like a rat that lives in the Sahara Desert. And they're like hieroglyphics, you know them when you see them. Fleetness. An adjective meaning swift and motion. Fleetness. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add that one to the vocabulary. He had the fleetness. Protectorate. A noun meaning government by a protect. Easy mode. Next round, we made it. Surcease. <laughs> a verb meaning to desist from action. Also, to come to an end. Cease. The word comes from... Surcease! Or molu. A noun meaning golden or gilded brass or bronze used for decorative purposes, as in mounts for furniture. Moulu originates from French, meaning ground gold. Or molu. A noun meaning golden or gilded brass or bronze used for decorative purposes, as in mounts for furniture. Moulu originates from French, meaning ground gold. Or molu. A noun meaning golden or gilded brass or bronze AU used for, for decorative gold. purposes, as in Moulu. mounts for furniture. Moulu originates Moulu. from French, meaning ground gold. Lou. Or molu. Or a noun molu. meaning golden or, or gilded molu. brass. Oh, <laughs> I thought for sure, bro. I thought for sure. She was looking like a type of sausage at a New Orleans restaurant. I thought we had it. Codswallop. A noun meaning words or I. So give me, I use it every day. Lebensraum. A noun okay, meaning territory believed. A Listen. Jains. A noun meaning an adherent of Jainism. The word Jane originates. Think I didn't play Crusader Kings 2, motherfucker? One word wrong. Or Molu. Oh my god, they fucking anglicized the shit out of this. They beat that word's damn ass when it came over, man. Or Molu? <laughs> they, <laughs> they even took out the AU that indicated that it was gold in the first place? They said, fuck that, man. Gold in French is OR. I like your nurse's uniform, guy. These are OR scrubs. Oh, are they? <laughs> oh, man. This looks really bad, but I bet it tastes great. I, something about the fucking, just the, I get that there's a reason for it. Why the fuck is the garlic just in there? Or is that even, maybe it's, those are cashews, never mind. Uh, when I see cashews in a dish, I, I tend to think maybe it's North African or African cuisine. Meat, chicken, lamb, or beef. Yogurt, often used in... South Asian and Mediterranean cooking. Maybe it is, gar maybe it's, no, it's probably cashews. Almonds, cashews, and raisins. <sighs> let, me, let me go Morocco on this. Nuts on the table. Take me to Casablanca. That's cold. Oh, they've, they've changed the game. That's cold. Um, a, what appears to be a braised chicken dish dating back to the 16th century. It's derived from the word for braise. Marinating meat in yogurt and spices, then cooking it slowly. Coconut milk as well. You know what? This kind of looks like it could be like a bone-in Cambodian sort of curry type deal. It's a little warmer. Could it... Well, let's see the name. Korma. Oh! I have to be honest with you, okay? I eat Indian food two times a month. I would love to eat it even more often. I really can't tell you the difference between a, a, a korma, a tikka masala, a Rogan Josh, a Joe Rogan. I, I, all I know is it, it all tastes amazing and I don't know what happens in the kitchen, but keep up the great work. I could tell you the difference between a naan and a paratha and a roti for sure, but when it gets into the sauces, it's t I know buttered chicken. Buttered chicken is, is typically orange or yellow. The rest of them, 
I just literally, it all sounds good. You should be able to walk into the Indian restaurant and just say, surprise me. It's all meat or vegetables in sauce, and it's, it's always great. This looks like a, it looks fucking amazing. Um, it, it looks like savory baklava, which to me, emblematic of the Mediterranean. I don't want to get into any sort of sensitive topics here. Maybe there's a, Spanakopita? I mean, is there like a, I always associate it with Greek food, but maybe it has like a Turkish or, I don't know, a Georgian sort of element to it. I'm going to say this is Greece. It's warm. A delectable pastry. That, it's kind of a value judgment. It offers a unique taste experience as you take a bite of delicate and flaky exterior. Was this written by the fucking CEO of, of Baklava? Each bite delivers a satisfying balance. And it's an experience that leaves you longing for another bite. It looks good, bro. You don't have to keep up the glazing. Mm. What is a... This is a Turkish okonomiyaki. This is a, this is from the nation of Georgia. That's hot. It's from the nation of Lebanon. It's from the nation of Turkey. Borek, you got me. Borek is a traditional Turkish pastry with a history dating back to the Ottoman Empire. Hang on, we got a, a DL Wiga message here. I ate Borek when I was in Croatia. I mentioned this to a Croatian coworker and he hates me now. I don't know what's, I mean, maybe they got strong feelings about uh, the origins of cuisines over here. I, I, I'm just completely ignorant to it culturally, but I remember that uh, Am I the Asshole Reddit post where people were getting into it over whether Santa was like Greek or Turkish. It's very serious. I never really thought of Santa as Greek or Turkish. I always thought of him kind of as like um, like Pennywise. Like he kind of just existed. You're like, where did he come from? He didn't. He just was always there. Even when he wasn't, he was, it's hard to explain. <laughs> but if he's from anywhere, he's probably from Canada because we have like the whole Hudson's Bay up to the Arctic to the North Pole kind of part. Like, okay, yeah, I get that there's like contested dominion going on up there. But at the same time, like, okay, if, if he is from Greenland, then fucking walk from Greenland to the North Pole, bitch. I doubt you're going to do it. You're not going to be portaging your fucking canoe across the Arctic Ocean. Anyway. You ever see The Terror? Now that's a show. This is, the ingredient is bird's nest. Bird's nest, water, sweetener, salt, and other flavorings. What the hell is this, bro? This is a munchos? This is from China. It must be. Bird's nest soup. That is not soup, okay? That's not soup. It's made from the saliva of swift-lit birds. It is enjoyed in many countries in Asian. So, tr is, it, is this true? The nest is constructed from the bird's saliva? I always thought it was like they just used noodles that looked like a bird's nest. It's good. I might try it. It's not like it's that much weirder than, you know, something with milk in it. We don't need to get into that again, but... Oh my God, they made it harder? <laughs> oh no, no, no. Dude, they follow my advice. Update, we made the game harder by only displaying two cast members. Oh, so this is Barry Pepper and th this is just a lady, man. I don't know who this is. I'm so happy they changed it though. So I think of a Barry Pepper movie, I'm a simple man. I go 25th hour. No, okay. Second Barry Pepper movie, easy. Nuts on the table, Saving Private Ryan. Woody Harrelson, Barry Pepper, and a stock image of somebody writing a news article. Um, Woody Harrelson, Barry Pepper, huh? 
Rampart, maybe? No, they don't have that one. Uh, um, 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 blue chip. He's not even in that one. Um, it's not, I don't think it's just Kingpin, bro. I would recognize it. Zombie Land <laughs> Double Tap. I haven't seen that one. He might be... Okay. Rosario Dawson, Woody Harrelson, Barry Pepper. I love that they made this harder, man. I still have no clue. Is this Solo? Was, did they soft launch Asuka live action in Solo? Will Smith, Rosario Dawson. Oh, it's, is it 27 pounds? Or uh, 120, 12 grams? 12, um, uh, 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 the, no, 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 hang on. It's the, <laughs> 12, seven pounds, seven pounds, seven pounds, seven pounds. You got it. The answer is seven pounds. We got it. They have made this game so much better. As soon as, you, well, you guys don't know who Elpedia Carrillo is? That's a good one. Barry Pepper is Dan. Ben's nameless brother. Oh, man. They have, that is, is working its way up the damn list. Barry Pepper, I loved you as Dan in the Traders Season 2 documentary. I guess it wouldn't be a documentary. Okay. Christopher Nolan, Tom Hardy. That's a tough one. Tom Hardy, one word title. Bronson. 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 Tom Hardy, director Christopher Nolan. Inception. We could go Dark Knight Rises, but that's going to be number one. Oscar nominee for cinematography. Mad Maximum. Fury Road. Mad Max Fury Road seems like one of those movies that probably has funny titles in other languages. Like, you can't tell me that in Romania this isn't called, like, Angry Maximilian and the Highway of Hatred or something like that. Killian Murphy, one-word title. Oppenheimer. He's so real for this. But the cinematography is the catch. Let me think about this. Marco Cain. Marco Cain, one word title. Alfie. Marco Cain, Christopher Nolan. Everything. What is everything he's ever done? Let's go to the prestige on this one. Because my guess is that uh, Interstellar was nominated for cinematography. it takes place in outer space they probably didn't even use a real camera oh <laughs> really okay children of men strawberry cough a horrible poster man no disrespect. Absolutely. God-awful post. Couldn't they have a poster of like the, the balloon where they play in the Court of the Crimson King or something like that? Okay. So you go, you go Batman Begins. The cinematography is the tough spot because they weren't nominating Sunshine for cinematography in 2006. I'm sorry, they just weren't doing it. The Academy didn't have Stones back then. Crash was winning Best Picture. They didn't have the nuts. So there's a, there's a Killian Murphy film I'm forgetting about. So if the best thing you could do would probably be go Oppie, Batman Begins. You could even go Dark Knight Rises where he makes his return and is probably going to be less guessed because in Batman Begins, he's the principal villain. You go Oppenheimer here. Oh, and then you go S fucking Sunshine, one word title, dummy. Oh, no, I don't have any more guesses. <laughs> Top 41%, though. Okay, fair enough. 
Fair enough. Nice. So long as dolls, bro. Oh, Dunkirk, of course, Dunkirk. Am I really playing Isaacle? I no, I can't. I'm sorry. It can't be done. New York Times strands. Find hidden words and uncover the day's theme. Can I interest you in actoral grid? Hang on, hold that thought for a second. Find theme words to fill the board. Banana, apple, fruit, lime. I get it, okay. Theme words fill the board entirely. No words overlap. Find the spangram. It describes the puzzle's theme and touches two opposite sides of the word. Need a hint? Find non-theme words to get hints. Okay. Today's theme, to put it mildly. Remark. That's not a correct word. Understandable. Other words that I see? Mm. Mid. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> uh, Peters. Hmm. Do. Hmm. They have to be longer than that many words, I suppose. They're longer than that many letters. Sus. Mm, said. Hmm, a hint, please. Darn. These will be fake swear words. I understand. Now I know what I'm looking for. Drat. Fooey. What? Okay, never mind. I'm okay. F what? That fits, bro. Moot me. <clears throat> Dang, dang, sheesh, crud. Mm. Poop, poop. <laughs> poop is a is a mild swear word for shit. Heck, okay, you got me on that one, and it must fill up the whole word. Isms, you, fa, misms. There we go. That's a big one. Are we done here? Shoot. Jeepers. Hang on, it's all coming together. Golly. Fudge. And Gadzooks. All right, that's reasonably fun. I could see that. Nice job finding the theme words and the spangram. You kind of destroyed it? Really? I kind of felt like I did bad, but I guess it was our first time. Okay, what the hell is actoral grid? D.L. Guiga says you used two hints. All right, D.L. Guiga, I saw your ass say you didn't even know that Christopher Nolan directed The Prestige. It's actually like his best movie, probably. You know, we've all got blind spots, brother. Where was your ass when Silicon Valley Bank was getting dragged for not adequately assessing their tail risk? Nassim Taleb. Really could have used you last March. What happened to Loving Tenant? I still love Tenant. Tenant is uh, Tenant is his best movie. Yeah, man, Tenant's his best movie. Absolutely. Where is Actoral Grid, man? How do I go to Actoral Grid? Shut up about Memento, okay? Tell me how to get to Actoral Grid. It's called Fill the Grid. Actoral, fill the grid. Actoral, fill the grid. Fill the grid with actors. The hell is this fucking... 
This looks like when you uh, check in at a hotel and you get a glimpse of the screen and they're using some kind of Microsoft Access UI from like 1986. I need a second to get my, uh, my sea legs. Common, actors common to the top, column's top movie and row's left movie. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, Wolf of Wall Street, Oscar-winning actor, actress. Leonardo DiCaprio. Correct. He's a genius. What do I do now? <laughs> um... Let me think about this for a second. Midnight in Paris, King Kong. Star Wars, The Last Jedi. I'm, I'm cooked, guys. I'm cooked. About Time, does that have Margot Robbie in it? Ah, Star Wars, The Last Jedi, About Time. Domhnall Gleeson. Correct. Star Wars, The Last Jedi. Okay, listen. You got Jack Black. You got Naomi Watts. You got Adrian Brody. And a lot of other guys, too. <laughs> uh, am I insane that this seems, like, really tough? Wolf of Wall Street. Jonah Hill. Jonah Hill. Leonardo DiCaprio. Margot Robbie. Other people were in this movie. Um, um, uh, um, his name is escaping me. Um, he's the guy from Remember the Titans. He's the guy from Mallrats. Ethan Supley. Any chance Ethan Supley is in any of these? I don't think Owen Wilson has won Best Actor. Can I get a hint on this one? Like, this seems, this seems hard, man. This seems impossible. There's no hints? Okay, let's, let's go with the obvious guesses then. Rachel McAdams must be the love interest here in both movies. And then in King Kong, there... Because my brain's getting the Adrian Brody and the Owen Wilson connected because of Wes Anderson, but neither of these involve Wes Anderson. And I don't think, you, I don't think Adrian Brody's in you, and I don't think Owen Wilson's in you. It was Beauty that killed the beast. Wow, Beauty killed the beast. That's so thoughtful. I would have thought like it would be like a, like, a, like a big bow and arrow or something, but Beauty, wow, I never would have thought of that. So insightful. And I honestly can't name a third actor from Midnight in Paris. So we're kind of cooked on this one. Who has won an Oscar? <laughs> uh, lots of people. Mm, lots of people. Lots of people have won Oscars. How about Star Wars The Last Jedi Oscar winning actor, actress? No shot. Daisy Ridley's got an Oscar. I'm sorry. Maybe a BAFTA. Maybe. Star Wars The Last Jedi. King Kong. Adrian Brody. Benicio Del Toro. Jack Black. Jack Black. Finn Wolfhard. Jacob Elordi. Timothy Chalamet. And Ansel Elgort star in Star Wars The Last Jedi. Featuring Oscar-nominated actor... Barry Pepper, Billy Baldwin, musical guest, Boy Genius. I give up, man. I don't know. This shit is, is hard, man. It's actually insanely easy. Holy cow. <laughs> it's unbelievably easy. <laughs> Maybe I'm just mentally cooked. Holy, I'll add it. I'll add it to the list. All right, I'm going to slash marker. 